Number one, you're going to come, start coming up with a whole list of negatives. So you're going to think, what if she doesn't like me? What if I'm not her type? What if she gives me a bad reaction? What if other people notice? Uh, what if she has a boyfriend? Um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What if she gets angry? You know, what if I'm embarrassed? This and this and this. And guys start coming up with this whole list of negatives, which number one, depletes their confidence. Number two, Approach anxiety, yes. Um, so, as you can see, she's a very attractive woman, but we just started having her do cold approach uh, over the past couple months. We were mostly meeting girls, like a lot of the threesomes we were having, we were having from girls I already had on my own rotation. And I would just say to the girls, and I've talked about this in other videos, but I would say, uh, hey, so I was just curious, are you bisexual? If they say yes, I say, oh, I have this pretty friend, she's interested in meeting you, here's pictures of her, send me pictures of you, Okay, cool. She thinks you're pretty too. Um, let's all meet, but don't worry. There's no expectation to hook up. Let's all meet and see how it goes. She comes over, done deal, boom, done. And we made a joint Tinder. We were getting girls like that. But now we actually have her uh, cold approaching, okay? And I remember the first cold approach you did, we were in a clothing store in the mall, and there was a pretty hot chick, like kind of by herself, looking through clothes. And I'm like, all right, go, that one right there. And it felt kind of like a boot camp because you were like hesitating and you're like, what do I say? What do I do? Like, what if this person sees what? And so, do you want to talk about like your experience with that? Because I want you guys to be able to relate to this. Because approach anxiety and like the fear of approach is like one of the major problems that everyone faces. With me. So I want you to hear like from a attractive female perspective. Yeah. So, my first approach, I felt very, very nervous. I was very I always tell guys to go for the number as the first line. Girls are less responsive over Instagram, and a lot of times that can just be like uh, like a blow off. Where not a, not yeah. to another girl usually, but um, you typically want to go for the phone number first. Yeah, but for me, there's like the thing, like because like not all the girls are bisexual. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. So you have like, to. Add, yeah. yeah. So when I ask for Instagram, can be like a girly thing. You know, when I ask for a number, it's more like personal. So for me, like kind of like okay, but for guys, I think. What was the rule I taught you to, to get over like that hesitating in the beginning? What was the rule I taught you with the three seconds? Just go, like for three seconds, you, you can see a hot like chick, just go. Like you feel the approach like really hot thing, right? But what about the three seconds part? <laughs> like, you don't wait three seconds. Yeah, you don't wait more than three seconds. So, so the classic old school game three second rule is still very important and very applicable. Yeah. So let me yeah, let me recap to those that are unfamiliar about the narrative about what's going on once a guy is like sitting there and, and debating going in or is like scared to go in. Number one, you're gonna come start coming up with a whole list of negatives. So you're gonna think, what if she doesn't like me? What if I'm not her type? What if she gives me a bad reaction? What if other people notice? Uh, what if she has a boyfriend? Um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What if she gets angry? You know, what if I'm embarrassed? This and this and this. And guys start coming up with this whole list of negatives, which number one, depletes their confidence. Number two, causes them to hesitate and like keep like kind of staring over there. And then the girl can see you kind of working up courage to go and approach her. And she's, yeah, and it's, yeah it becomes like a big deal. Um, she sees you, you know, she could see you as, as being too chicken or too much of a pussy to actually go in and approach. And also the girl could end up getting busy or leave. Okay, she could go into the restroom. She could go into check out at the store, or, or she could go and meet up with her friends. Now you're dealing with a group situation where you could have talked to her one-on-one. -on -one. So we had this situation at the beach where there was uh, an attractive blonde girl. She's walking towards us. I said, "Go in, um, that girl, that girl." Right. So if you would have went straight in, you would have been 
potentially successful in getting a number, but instead you were like, oh, I'll go in a second, I'll go in a second, she walked yeah, by. Said, yeah. We assumed she was going to the bathroom. You went to walk with her towards the bathroom, and then she ended up going and sitting with her mom, and then we lost the opportunity. So, like, do you want to, like, reflect on what you learned there? <laughs> yeah, I just got, like, when I first saw you, know, stop waiting for, like, because more than it more. So stop waiting for, like, the, the perfect opportunity. Uh, stop trying to, um, like, work up the courage. Just put yourself into a mode where as soon as you see an attractive girl, barring any extreme oh. circumstances, okay, like if she's with a dude holding his hand, or like you're extremely late for a meeting or, or whatever else, force yourself to just go in and approach, okay? Because when you don't approach, what are your odds? What are your chances? Zero. Zero percent. So I always tell guys, like, literally um, doing anything, as opposed to doing nothing, is going to have a far bigger upswing. And here's kind of a cool thing. Like I tell guys this in my, in my uh, mentorship program a lot. I say, listen guys, like, I have almost 13,000 phone numbers on my phone. I didn't track the number of approaches, but it's more than 13,000, okay, which is a fuck ton. I mean, there's online game leads in there too, so I don't know how many physical approaches I've done. But uh, the thing is, is that there's been plenty of times where I was like very, very, very close to chickening out. But I went in and did it anyways. I just forced myself to. And that girl ended up becoming a rotation girl for many months. We had lots of amazing experiences together, lots of amazing sex, etc. And I was so close to not going in. And if I hadn't gone in, none of that whole like path would have ever materialized, right? And I would have like kept like a little bit of, uh, guys are, like trying to make the safe move. Like it would have been a little more comfortable. I wouldn't have put myself out there that particular day. But what's the reward there? I, I get to feel a little bit uh, safer, more comfortable for the, for the second. And I see the same thing on boot camps when I run live programs. I'll say, I'll be with like six guys. I'll say, hey, red dress, coming this way. You, hit it up. And then the girl, the girl is walking towards, which girl, which girl? The only girl, that one. Oh, uh, which, I don't, I don't know which one. The only girl right there. You have about four or five seconds left. Oh, uh, what should I say? Which, which girl is it again? And the girl passes. And guys like to do this. And what they're doing is just trying to like combat the fear by playing it safe. Like, uh, I'll do the next one. That way they don't have to put themselves out there right then in the moment and they get to preserve, okay, but then what about the next time? You're gonna feel that exact same shit, so you just have to barrel through it. And then this, this problem is symptomatic throughout the entire game process. Oh, should I be physical with the girl? No, it's better to play it safe and not and try to escalate. Oh, should I make sexual uh, innuendos and verbals? No, like, she might be offended, you know, she might look creepy, etc. I'm not gonna do that stuff. And then at the end of the date, the chick's like, oh, well, you know, it was nice meeting you, and she friend zones you because you weren't physical and you weren't escalating. So, the point of the story is, even a pretty girl can feel approach anxiety, even though it's not like, you know, it's like do or die, like you have me as your boyfriend, we have a bunch of threesome girls, like, it's not like you need that particular girl, but it's just human instinct to... Like you don't want to have been rejected. Yeah. yeah. And if you did, like, this is, another, this is another kind of funny thing, because whenever she had, like, her own Tinder, she was getting a match on, like, every right swipe, now we have the joint Tinder. And, She'll, she can like swipe a whole bunch and like no matches or like numbers that she'll get from cold approach like sometimes they like stop replying or they don't text back and she's like that's never happened with a guy before but like now she's seeing it from like the other side like where the chicks are playing all kinds of fucking games and shit. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to hell so, no that's what guys have to deal with so <laughs> um the point i mean what other what other stuff did you want to say about that in terms of uh approaching Yeah. But uh, yeah, but you also so she's about doing volume. Okay, make sure you put more people into the funnel. However, it has to be you have to be doing the correct the correct uh, methodology as well and the correct strategy, which I teach in my courses. Okay, speaking of which, if you have interest in joining my eight-week mentorship, get on a free 30-minute call. Click the link in the description. I'll tell you what we can do for you, how we can take you from whatever level you're at, bring you to a very advanced level very fast. Okay, but just simply doing the approaching isn't enough. Okay, I've made videos before on massive action. Just taking massive action as RSD uh, recommends and prescribes is going to le lead to a lot of frustration and failure because you're doing the same thing wrong many, many, many times. It's not going to suddenly work out correctly when you're doing it wrong. Okay?
So it's a, a combination of uh, pushing past the approach anxiety and having the correct training so that when you do take the action, that it leads to a, a good result with a high probability. Okay, that's why I have virgins come on my program that have tried all kinds of different things for years, and then in the first week they lose their virginity. Why? Is it because all that massive action finally hit a critical mass and a tipping point? No. They were given the correct strategy, so now that when they go and take action, they're giving themselves actually a fighting chance to get the results rather than barely any chance at all, which is what, what most guys are doing. So that's pretty much it uh, for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, lots more cool shit to come. Subscribe to me on Instagram, John Anthony Lifestyle, and we will see you. And we will see you. <laughs> and we will see you guys in the next video. Take care. Some do it for the income, but we do it for the outcome. Some of us are active, while others just let their mouth run. No doubt, son, this is not just about fun. We will not be outdone by these cowards who shout scum.